In this video, we apply molecular orbital theory to polyatomic molecules. Uh, the application of MO theory to polyatomic molecules in this video is going to be uh, carried out on the butadiene molecule. Okay, butadiene has a Lewis dot structure that is like this. It's four carbon atoms with alternating single and double bonds. And then you have saturation with hydrogen atoms here. All right, so again, our, our goal here is to uh, try to explain some features in this molecule using molecular orbital theory. Well, uh, when we think about the Lewis dot structure and how those bonds are formed, we can clearly see that uh, there's a single and a double bond between those two bonds, and then a uh, single and a double bond between those two bonds. The number of electron groups around each carbon atom would be three, and that means that uh, the electron group arrangement would be trigonal planar, and that means that the hybridization of each one of the atoms will be sp2, right? So you have here an sp2 carbon atom, sp2, sp2, and then sp2. All right, then uh, we can, uh, with this uh, hybridization, we can then understand uh, the bonding structure using valence bond theory by saying that this uh, single bond is formed via an overlap of uh, uh, two sp2 hybrid uh, orbitals in these two carbon atoms, and then the pi bond is simply a pi overlap between an hybrid 2p orbitals that are coming out of the plane. Okay, according to that model, uh, what you actually observe here is that uh, those pi bonds then are localized in between those two atoms and then between those two atoms. But what we actually know is that in reality, uh, the electrons in the pi structure of this molecule are actually localized in the entirety of the molecule. Right, so the question is how do we actually uh, understand that? Great. Uh, so I have here a um, physical model of butadiene where you, we're going to be able to understand this a little better. Okay, so that is your uh, butadiene molecule. Let me actually flip it around. So that is the same thing as what we have there. Well, I'm not going to flip it around, but you can see how uh, uh, this molecule is what we have. You have here double bonds. Uh, one of the CHs just fell off. Let me see if I can uh, bring it up. Okay, that is your uh, final CH. Uh, the important thing here is that we're now, uh, now we're going to worry about the pi structure. Okay, so we flip the molecule around, and what we see automatically there is uh, the four 2pc orbitals that are unhybrid. So what we're going to do uh, from now on is take a look at this, uh, uh, how molecular orbitals are formed from these four 2pc uh, hy unhybrid orbitals. Okay, so let me actually then uh, draw the molecule again here, but only taking, uh, taking a look at how those orbitals interact, right? So have you, you have here one, two, three, four, and these are the ones responsible for the pi structure in that molecule, 2pc. Right? That is your carbon atom, carbon, carbon, carbon. And again, we're trying to see how we, we can use molecular orbital theory to explain that pi structure. So what we know is that each one of them has one electron. And in valence bond theory, then what we say is that there's an overlap between these two. Uh, you will have an antiparallel spins, right? And that would be a pi bond. And then an overlap between these two, a pi overlap with antiparallel spins. And then you will have the other one. But again, that is dissatisfying because we know that uh, there's actually electron localization around the molecule. Right? So molecular or real theory is actually able to handle this quite well. The idea is that you're going to mix these four and hybrid two PC atomic orbitals to generate four molecular orbitals that now belong to the entire molecule. And it turns out that uh, the way that you're going to mix them, linear combina the linear combinations for uh, these four orbitals are actually fairly easy to see. Right? You can come here and say that the first one is going to be like this, one, two, three, and four. Okay, where all of the phase, uh, where all of the orbitals are in phase, right? So this is either the positive or negative, and then that will be your first uh, molecular orbital, which essentially is going to span the entire length of the molecule. Right, the second uh, uh, molecular orbital will be like this: one, two, three, four. Okay, and now the signs of the linear combination are going to be like this. Okay, so well, what you will have is that uh, uh, the way that the orbital is going to look like, we can actually look at the probability distributions, right? Notice that there will be a node right here because the wave function changes sign as it crosses this one from the second to the third atom. So if we look at the size squared, 
this is going to be something like this. Okay, and the size chord for this uh, uh, ordinal is going to look like this. Okay, the third ordinal would be like this. One, two, three, four. You will have that, 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 and this. Right, so notice that now we're going to have two nodes, right? There's one node right here, the wave function changes sign there, and then uh, the wave function changes sign is also there. So if we uh, draw the probability distribution for that, it's going to be something like these two nodes. And the last linear combination, the last molecular orbital, is going to be like this. We have that all of the orbitals are out of phase. Okay, so that is that orbital, that orbital. So you have one, two, three uh, nodes. So you draw this, that will be psi uh, squared. It's going to be one, two, three. Okay, so how is this is how the molecular orbitals look like. And of course, it is inescapable uh, that those pi electrons uh, uh, follow the wave functions that we get out of the particle in a 1D box. Okay, and this is actually not, not a, a, a coincidence. You can clearly see how this molecule, the pi cloud, is actually a really good model for a particle in a 1D box, where the box is simply the molecule. Okay, and again, notice that by just taking a layer combinations of the hybrid 2PC orbitals, right, we can actually uh, recapitulate here uh, the probability, dis probability distributions that we get in the particle in a 1D box. Okay, so uh, then how does the molecule behave? Well, the idea here is that now we have four molecular orbitals that we're going to call pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and then pi 4. And these ones will be anti-bonding, and those are bonded. Notice that we have a total of four electrons uh, uh, in that pi cloud. So electrons will be placed like this. Four electrons in the bonding orbitals, no electrons in the anti-bonding orbital. Okay, so uh, uh, this clearly explains uh, the electron lo the localization of um, uh, in butadiene and other molecules that are called uh, uh, polyenes. And again, uh, notice that with the way that we do this is we invoke molecular orbital theory through the entire molecule, in this case the pi, uh, the pi orbitals. Okay, and uh, uh, that explains electron the localization along these molecules. Okay, so in this video we have uh, applied molecular orbital theory to explain the pi structure in the molecule of mutadine.